All right, everyone, welcome to this episode of the Social Agent Secrets Podcast. Today, we have a very special guest, um, not only to a lot of people who already know of him out there, but to me personally, someone who's definitely helped me along my journey in this digital marketing strategy that I decided to adopt early on in my real estate career. Um, today, we have Dustin Brome from the Massive Agent Podcast joining us on this episode of the Social Agent Secrets. Dustin, um, first of all, thanks for coming on and taking the time sure. to do this show today. And, um, you know, if you could just kind of introduce yourself, uh, let us know a little bit about your background and your story and your history in a minute or two. And uh, then we'll jump right into this episode, which we're covering why every realtor and loan officer needs a podcast ASAP and how to get started um, today here with Dustin Brome. That's a solid title right there, my friend. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, definitely an honor. So my name is Dustin Brome. I'm a real estate agent in Salt Lake City, and I've been an agent for about nine years now. And I'm really, I, I've, you know, since I became an agent and got licensed, I, I evolved to realize that I'm a real estate marketer that, that sells homes. And so, um, you know, I love the marketing. I love everything about promoting your brand, promoting yourself, promoting your listings, all of that because it helps you sell more homes, obviously. Um, so all the, the nerdy marketing stuff I love. And, and it, was, it, it was interesting, about halfway through my real estate career, I, I mean, I was struggling, man. Like I, I couldn't pay my bills. It was causing a lot of stress on my family and, and you know, bad news. Yeah. And, and it was because I was doing stuff that my, that my mentor told me that I needed to do, that he was showing me, Hey, here's the roadmap to sell more homes. And it was, you know, it was what was working for him. Look, I don't have any ill will towards him at all. Like he's an amazing person, uh, helped me out a lot, but the way he, he got new clients was, was a chasing, you know, he, he would chase by cold calling, door knocking, um, you know, at one point he even was wearing his name tag at the grocery store and would hit people up in the checkout lines or the produce section. Like, you know, that was his personality. That's not mine at all. Okay. So I never had any success with that crap because I hated every second of it. And when you're doing something you don't like, you cannot be successful maybe in the short term, but not over the long term. Cause at some point you're going to, you're going to stop doing it because you hate it. So out of necessity, cause I was starving to death. I, I went to Google and I started looking up, you know, how to get real estate leads. And, and it brought me to this concept of content marketing, mm -hmm. attraction marketing, how, and it was a, it was a total like mind blowing shift in approach. Cause it was like, uh, I was thinking to myself, wait, I could actually just like do a video or write an article or whatever. Cause like podcasting wasn't really what it is today back then. Um, like Instagram stories wasn't around. Uh, so I'm like, I could blog or I could do a YouTube video and that could actually bring someone to me that they could actually see it and then call me wanting to hire me. And at the time I was like, bullshit, like th that sounds great. <laughs> but I found some, some other real estate bloggers who were successfully doing that and have been for a while. And, and they became uh, mentors from afar. And so I jumped in uh, at the time I spent like 600 bucks on a website an easy agent pro website that I still have today and, and love. But back then it was, it was expensive. And to me, that was like, it was like my life savings. Uh, yep. Well, I didn't even have that. So I'm, it, to me, it was like, a, it was this huge risk, but I jumped in and started writing some articles and doing some videos. And, and at the time I was just starting to use Snapchat as well. And just putting myself out there in as many places as possible. And it worked. I, I got validation three or four months in when somebody found a YouTube video of mine that which took them to my website and they called me and they're like, Hey, we need to buy a house. Um, we want to hire you. Wow. And it validated everything that I thought was possible, but didn't have any actual real life proof for myself ever since then, man, it's been game on, uh, putting out as much content as possible. But more importantly, I realized it's not just about putting it out. You have to get people to know it exists by promoting it. Mm -hmm. So I started learning about social media, started learning about Facebook ads, Google ads, uh, led me to podcasting, led me to uh, Alexa, led me to all sorts of different ways to promote content and, and my, changed everything, changed my life. And now I, my main focus is helping other agents to sell more homes by teaching them how to do what I did. 
Yeah, so that's, that's really interesting. There were a few key takeaways that I really, really want to just touch on real quick. First, you were taught from a mentor of yours when you first got started in the business. Um, what year was that, by the way? Uh, dude, I don't know. It was like four or five years ago. Okay, so around 2013, 14, 15, somewhere in there, you were being yep. taught some traditional methods of real estate marketing and practices, which, by the way, from what I understand, they still work today, but they just were not for you. And instead of throwing in the towel, instead of giving up and saying, you know what, this must be the only way I'm not good at it, or I just don't like it, it doesn't fit my personality. Mm -hmm. um, instead of giving up, you were searching for a different way, a new way, and you stumbled across an attraction-based lead generation approach. Does that sound about right? Exactly. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I... It, it's, I just, I haven't really thought about this reflected on it much, but when, when you're struggling so bad, a lot of people quit the business. Yeah. I didn't. And, and like, I never really thought about it as an option at the time. See, see, this is weird for me. Cause like, I haven't thought about it until just now that we brought it up. It wasn't really an option. Cause I'm, I'm not employable. <laughs> I'm not an employable person. Like I've, I've got to do my own thing. I have to do it my way. And you know, I, I have ex I have extreme ambition. I want a lot for my life and you can't get that if you're working as a teller at a bank. So yeah, it, it was all out of necessity, man. It was, uh, it was crazy. So I was taught one thing that worked for him. I didn't like it. So you went out and you found marketers who were doing it a different way online and you turned them into your mentors from a mentors from afar, so to speak. Like you went out there, you didn't necessarily know these people, those bloggers you mentioned that, you were kind of learning from, um, from a distance. Um, and they kind of became mentors to you in a sense where there wasn't a one-on-one -on -one relationship, but the content that they'd left out there is something you were able to learn from, right? Exactly right, exactly. So that's, that's really huge. Uh, one of the things that we talk about on here is exactly what you said was, which is why I wanted to have you on, um, you know, attraction-based, um, compelling-based rather than chase and convince. Um, and you're one of the best in the industry, if not, the best in real estate when it comes to not only doing that, but uh, teaching it. And so, you wow. know, yeah, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm going to go off on the Thanks, limb there. Um, personally, I've learned quite a bit from you. I know there are hundreds, if not thousands now, who have also benefited from the knowledge that you share. So thank you for that. And thank you for, for bringing this um, onto our show today so our listeners can benefit from it as well. Um, one of the things that we want to talk about today on today's episode is um, podcasting specifically. There's, there's a multitude of formats and, and, and ways that you can use different social media channels to put out different types of content, right? So you've got, like you mentioned earlier, blogs, you've got um, video, you've got putting a picture up on Instagram or your Facebook feed, but then you also have podcasting, which is just audio. Um, and I want to touch on, you know, why you started in creating your own podcast platform um, and what it's done for you, not only for, you know, your personal brand, but your real estate business um, in general. And so why podcasting? Why did you even start with podcasting? It's, it's kind of a crazy story. So I, I decided to do the show and I recorded my first episode on New Year's Day 2018. Mm. I really New Year's night. Like it, so I walk the dog at night once the kids are asleep and I, I listen to podcasts. And, you know, as a marketer, I'm always looking for, for new ways of reaching people, right? And, and I listen to podcasts and I liked them and I always thought that'd be a great thing. I should do that. But like most people were like, oh, that's cool. I should do that. And then we don't. We just add it to the list. And, and so I added it to the list and it had been on the list for, you know, a year or two. And something about the podcast I was listening to, it was, uh, it was a Pat Flynn, uh, smart passive income podcast. Oh yeah. And something about it made it seem so doable mm -hmm. and that if I didn't, I'd really miss out on a big opportunity and something I think was just like, you know, you know, you know, when you get an idea or, or your gut tells you something and then you just freaking do it. That's what happened. Like, I can't really explain it. I was just like, I was walking the dog and I'm like, hmm, I'm going to go, I'm going to go back. I'm going to, as soon as I get back home, I'm going to record the first episode. Okay. What should I do it about? 
And, I'll, and I'm like, well, the first episode I'll do about why I'm doing a podcast and what the show is going to be about, right? Easy. And, and so I started listening to a couple other things uh, that it was a podcast about podcasting. And so they were giving a couple tips, like make sure if you're going to do it, launch with three to five episodes. Reason why guys is if, if, if you just put out one episode and somebody likes your show, they don't have anything else to binge on. They can't listen to anything else if you only put out one episode. And they're, they're probably not going to subscribe to you after one episode. So you have to give them more to listen to, to binge on, so that you solidify yourself in their mind and, and give them, you know, hey, this is going to be a show. There's more to come. You better, you should subscribe. So I, and I'm thinking of a name too. I'm like, I'm like, what? Okay, mega agent came to mind. And I'm like, what's bigger than that? And I'm like, oh, massive agent. And I, I didn't overthink it. I was just like, screw it. That's the name, Massive Agent. And and I just went home and recorded the first episode and recorded two more the next day and did it. And it it was, and in hindsight, it's one of the most powerful things I've ever done for growing my brand and growing my audience outside of the circles and clicks that I already had. Yep. Uh, it's been absolutely incredible and, and just getting started. You know, uh, 80, 80, episode 86 comes out this week. And it's just mind boggling. But the reason why podcasting is so big right now, and guys, it's really not big. Like it, it might feel big, but only half the population has ever even listened to a podcast. Okay. It, like if, pod, if you think podcasting is big now and you think the, the, the ship has sailed, only half the population has listened. So, I mean, it's crazy. And most of them listen to multiple, multiple different shows. So uh, the reason being is you can listen to a, a podcast while washing the dishes, while driving your kids to school, while driving to and from uh, showing homes. You could do it while walking the dog. You know, when you're in the shower, you could have a speaker playing a podcast. You, you don't have to be watching the screen like you do with a YouTube video. So it's, it's easy to do. It's easy to consume passively. It's free. Podcasts are free. And there's always a brand new, fresh podcast. Um, you know, fresh content, unlike an audiobook. I love audiobooks. I love Audible, but once the book's published, it's published. Like every day that goes by, it gets outdated. Podcasts are not that way because another episode could come out tomorrow that updates everything. So uh, podcasting is here to stay. People are obviously showing they like to listen to it. And so I decided I'm going to do that too and just share all my secrets, all my strategies that I've used to grow my own real estate business and sell more homes. I'm going to share it all with other agents. That's awesome. And, um, you know, I am one who believes in the golden rule. Um, so, you know, the more you give, uh, it comes back tenfold some way, shape or form. And I think that this approach, as far as a content creator goes, is absolutely extremely powerful for that reason specifically. And then there's so many other reasons as well. But, you know, leading right into the next question that I had for you is, um, you know, this show is specifically for uh, real estate professionals, loan officers, even escrow officers. Um, for me, um, I think that they all need to be kind of learning how to lead generate themselves, right? They need to be able to to do that and they if we're going to use this approach of attraction based marketing and and content based marketing and podcasts are one of the pieces in that strategy um what kind of content um or show structure or style is best for a realtor or a loan officer who's thinking about starting a podcast like um you know if you could dive into like when you decide to um interview somebody as opposed to do the episode by yourself what is the topic? How do you decide the topic? Um, if you could specifically maybe give one quick example for a realtor and what would be a good idea for the type of show, maybe local based or, or educational based, um, um, and also maybe one for a loan officer as well. For sure. Uh, so it's the same for a loan officer, title person, real estate agent, same thing. Do a show that is you're just like being a local resource. You, it's, a, it's the local blog in audio form. Okay, so people are always wondering what's going on in their town, in their neighborhood, in their subdivision, in the city, whatever. They're always wondering what's going on. Uh, maybe there's like a, a hot button issue that's being talked about at the local school board or something, and, and you want to provide some context on that. Or you're reviewing the best parks to take your kids to. All the stuff that works as a blog, you can do an episode about. Mm. So do not make it about real estate. Do not. 
Don't make it about loans. Don't make it about rates. Don't make it about the 10 tips for buying your first house. Do not do that because you, you dramatically limit the number of people that will listen. And if they do, they only listen when they need the information and they'll never come back after. Make it a local community-based show that people have a reason to keep coming back every single week. Maybe twice a week if you're really feeling frisky. But um, <laughs> just make it about the area, okay? People will keep coming back and they'll know you're an agent because you're going to mention it for proper disclosure and you just, hey, I'm Dustin with EXP Realty in Salt Lake, boom, and then go into the show. That's it. That's it. So that's it. Um, I, what was the other part of your question? Um, you know, basically, so that, that format would work for both a loan officer then and a realtor, basically. 100%. It's not necessarily about um, rates or loans or um, you know, anything that's mundane and boring like our day-to-day -day business really kind of is sometime, but more about the community, more yeah. about um, maybe a new restaurant that's opening, like you said, maybe a new park, but something that's community-based that gives people a reason to keep coming back and listening. And really the only plug you have to do is your introduction in the beginning, simply stating the fact that you're either a realtor or a loan officer, and then people will know exactly what you do and that will resonate with them internally. Mm -hmm. That's it. Oh, and you were asking about like the, the format of the show, like interview versus not. Yeah. So, so me, I fly by the seat of my pants. I do whatever the hell I feel like. If I, sometimes I just don't plan ahead and don't have a guest and I'm like, hmm, I'm going to talk about websites today and then I just do it. So I, but when I zoom out, I think about what I have covered, what I'd like to, I try to give as many options to agents and lenders as possible so that they can decide what's best for them when you're doing a local show, I mean, there's no shortage of content. There, there's so much stuff to do. A new, a new business is coming into town. Like uh, it, it's crazy. I, I think you should do interviews if you're doing a local show because there's, there's some strategy here too. First off, it takes the pressure off of you as the host. So you don't have to always be talking the whole damn time. Um, you can always have a new person on. And guess what? You become the local celebrity, the local influencer when you're a show host. You can leverage, I mean, I probably should have mentioned this later in the show, but I might forget because that's the way I work. Mm -hmm. You can leverage the fact that you have a podcast in your listing presentation. Hey, I'm a show host, okay? I can promote your listing on my show. And maybe you just mention, in, maybe part of your show is like, you know, the, the home of the week or something. And you do it at the end of the show, whatever. Yeah. Pe pe that's exciting to people who aren't marketers. Um, so when you have people on and interview them, the strategy is they're going to share that with their network. All right. So, so when you have them on, first off, they see you as this authority figure now, or as this, you know, you're a show host, you're not just the, the agent. And and then when they're on the show, they're excited. A lot of them will be very nervous if, if they're not on, if they're, if they're not interviewed that often, they're going to be nervous. They're going to be like, oh my gosh, because it's, it's, they see it as their big break, right? Yeah. Which is awesome that you can provide that to people locally. You could provide that to the local um, food truck owner that, that just started their food truck last week and they have amazing tacos. And now they're being interviewed on, on a podcast. That's a big deal for them. And when it's a big deal for them, they share that. I was hey. just going to ask you about that. I was just going to ask you about the power of their network as well and, and how that might look when the podcast is published. You know, what do you tell that person you're interviewing to do with it? Sorry, we lost. Are you still there? Yeah. Oh, cool. Zoom cut out for a second. Um, no, I just, I, I set the expectation. Uh, I'm like, Hey, you know, when, when this episode's ready, I'm going to email you a link I'm going to email you some show graphics. If you can put some graphics together for them um, and just say, here you go. Here's some stuff for you to share and, and maybe even be specific. Say, here's a great link to email out that people can listen to the show on any device. You know, so if you have a website and you've embedded the episode in that, um, that's what I do with my show on massiveagentpodcast.com. I just embed the podcast player and that's what I post on social. So if, so if you post an iTunes link, but somebody has an Android phone, they can't listen. So you got to take that into consideration. You could have a website where you embed that, or you could give them an, an iPhone link. You can give them a Google podcast link, give them a Spotify link specifically and say, here, 
If you're going to email this to your, to your network, use this link. If you're going to share it on social, use this one. Here's a graphic. And then that obviously sets the expectation that you want them to share. Uh, they're going to want to anyways, because yeah. they're going to want to promote the fact that their business, their, their food truck was just featured on this podcast. A lot of them will add you to their website. A lot of them will post on social media about it. And it, it, it's just cool. So give them tools to make it easier to do that. Give them links, give them some graphics if you can, and it makes it easier for them to share and they will. And it's pretty much as simple as putting together an email with that graphic, with those links and some short instructions on how to do it. Um, and most likely they're going to want to do that. And you'll have the power of being exposed to their network, but they will also have the power of being exposed to your podcast network and your social media networks when you share that content as well. So I definitely love that. Um, I mean, do you think that podcasting is either right now or sometime in the near future or not too far off future will be one of the most powerful forms of content creation? I think it is now. Uh, well, that and video. Uh, video is still king because being able to see somebody face to face, like you can, you can build a real strong relationship with somebody through video. A lot of my best friends, you know, you and I met through Snapchat. Yep. Right. Um, a lot of my best friends in the industry, we built that relationship through Snapchat or Instagram stories or social media. So, so I don't want to discount that, but I mean, so video is still key. Podcasting is quickly becoming uh, right up there. And, and it's a great opportunity to advertise your business on local podcasts, right? So when you, so this is great. If you're trying to build your business and you're like, I'm not going to do a podcast, not, not interested, don't want to do it. Find some local podcasts and sponsor them, advertise on them. Uh, there's one, one of the bigger shows here in Salt Lake. It's called the I am Salt Lake podcast. They've been doing it for like seven years. You could, you could sponsor an episode for what is it? Like a hundred bucks. Yeah. I think they're grossly undercharging, but nonetheless, like you could, for a, a very small amount, you could sponsor a whole damn episode where the host talks about you in a positive light. So it's a huge, huge opportunity. And I'm seeing Gary V start to actually talk more openly that podcasting is now the opportunity. It's the undervalued opportunity. If you have, if you have your own show, now you have a place where others can come to sponsor other local businesses can pay you to be on your show, right? So now there's other income streams here. You're becoming more of a media company and, and it just gets crazy. So I, I do think podcasting is, is right up there in, in the top two mediums that you, if you're not taking advantage of, it's, it's, it's silly. I 100% I agree. Um, I was scared for about a year or two. And then I finally had some sort of moment kind of like you did where I was like, enough is enough. And something just clicks in your brain where you just like make a decision and then it's like done. And then you just go off and do it. Like I had no idea yep. how to do it. I just told myself, well, I'm going to do it. And then you just Google, you figure it out. There's so many different ways to do it. Um, but the other point that I definitely want to, to make here after hearing what you just said is that I've, I've heard, and, and I don't know if you've heard this too, that the average podcast listener makes like two or three times amount of money income per year than the, than the person who doesn't listen to podcasts. Right. There's all sorts of info out, out there like demographics and the, the demographics of podcast listeners. It's like, I don't know if you've heard Pinterest, the, the demographics, like the, the average income of a Pinterest user is over a hundred K. Wow. Pinterest users usually have money to spend on the stuff they're pinning all the time. Yep. So uh, that's why Pinterest could be a great place to advertise depending on what you're offering. Um, you know, podcasting is the same thing. Podcast listeners tend to be uh, higher in the, the average income than those who don't. So if you're in real estate or you're a loan officer or mortgage broker and, um, you know, you want to get in front of people who are on the more affluent side of things, podcasting would definitely be a great, a great place to go based on those demographics real quick, easiest way to start a podcast today. Uh, the easiest, take your iPhone, grab the voice notes, start talking, hit record, start talking. Okay. Um, and, and, and I'm going to tell you what, that's exactly what I did. Voice memos. And I actually edited my first podcast on GarageBand. Um, 
And then Ooh, that's a beast of a program. I, I can't use that. I don't know how to do it. Well, it was the garage man on my phone though. There's one on your phone. So okay. I trans I did it all on my phone and I say that, but, um, so the most basic thing is, is go ahead, make some voice memos to create your first podcast episode. If, if you want to go about it the easiest way, right? Mm -hmm. Um, obviously there's a bunch of other tools out there. Um, I know that you have some resources for people out there who might be wanting to do maybe more than just, um, recording a voice memo on an, on an iPhone or, or an Android and then uploading it. Like how would, what, what do they do after they have the video file? Um, where could they go to learn more about podcasting? Um, maybe from some resources that, that you might already have out there. Great question. So on my website, massiveagentpodcast.com slash resources, I have a list to uh, an Amazon store with some podcasting equipment. And I'm talking a mic, like a hundred dollar mic. There's even a $70 mic. That's fantastic. Okay. The, the one that you see on the screen here, this is the blue Yeti. It's like a hundred, 120 bucks. It's extremely sensitive. So you have to be in a quiet area. Um, but it has great sound. There's another one by audio Technica that I want to say it's the 2100 something or other. And you get it on Amazon. It's like 70 bucks and it's not as sensitive. Still sounds great. Easy to travel with. Um, but get a mic. Spend 70 to 120 bucks and get a mic. It, they're USB mics, so they plug right into your laptop. Okay. That's all I do. I take my, my Blue Yeti, I plug it into my MacBook, and, and then I use a program called ScreenFlow. It's just a video editing program, but it, it records. You can use GarageBand. You can use the voice notes on your Mac. You can use, um, if you're on PC, there's a free program called Audacity. I'm not smart enough to use those programs because they're they're... Like if you want to really edit audio and get really nerdy, that's what you use. And I'm not that. So I just, uh, screen flow is really easy. Um, but you could actually just record in your iPhone in a quiet place. And, and then what do you do with the audio file? Okay. Yeah. That, that's where, that's where the rubber meets the road. You need what's called a podcast host. Okay. A host is a, is software that you upload the audio file and then the host distributes it out to wherever like Apple podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google podcasts, um, Stitcher and Alexa. There's a few others. Um, it makes it so easy. And so you set up the connections one time you get approved with Apple, you get approved with Spotify, you get approved with Google podcasts once then the connections made. And every time you upload and publish a new a new uh, episode, it automatically goes to all of those platforms. So, so what hosting platform are you using for that specifically? I use Buzzsprout and okay. Buzzsprout is, it's like 12 bucks a month. It could be 20 if you're doing hour, hour long shows. Um, but no more, you know, 12 to $20 a month. So user friendly. It's amazing. I swear by Buzzsprout. I do, I do all three of my shows on Buzzsprout. I, I have my industry connected podcast. I have massive agent podcast and then my uh, massive agent minute flash briefing. I do them all with, with Buzzsprout. There's on that, on that page I sent you to the resources page on my website. There's a link to get uh, for, you know, people who are trying out Buzzsprout, they give you like a $20 Amazon gift card. Do that. Do not look at any other hosts. I promise you, unless you are the nerdiest nerd of the nerds, you do not need Libsyn. Libsyn's what 99% of the industry uses and it's pure garbage. Use Buzzsprout. It's very user-friendly. It, it does all the same stuff Libsyn does in, in an easier way. So Buzzsprout's all you need. So you record the audio file, you upload it to Buzzsprout and then hit publish. And you're going to you know, select a headline, a title for the show, a little description. It guides you through that and that's it. And then it's just getting people to, to know your show exists by promoting it everywhere else online social and that that right there could be um you know an episode for you know a different time how do you drive traffic but step number one you guys is going out there pressing the dang record button and publishing it um if you it, all right let's say they wanted to create a quick intro like um you recommend maybe just going on fiverr or something like that and just getting a podcast intro created or they probably don't even need that to start like what are your thoughts on on that so that's a great question. Um, you do not need an intro and I'm talking like, you know, the intro music, here's what you do need. You need some consistency every single episode. 
So that, that could mean different things. I chose to have the more traditional intro created. I did go to Fiverr. It cost me like 80 bucks. I sent them some YouTube clips of, you know, I want this clip. I want this one, throw them in. I want electronic music or something and do it. And I, they sent it back to me. It sounded great. And I, I've been running with it ever since. You don't need to do that. Uh, you could, you could just get some royalty free music from SoundCloud or something. Mm-hmm. And, and on my industry connected podcast, that's all I did. I just have some, some music that starts the show for about 10 seconds and then it fades out and the audio starts. So that was it. There was, there was no was intro it. for that one. You just have some royalty free music and then you pump right into the beginning of your episode on industry connected, which by the way yep. is geared towards loan officers, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, it's for everyone in the industry. So, so it's, it's definitely more of a marketing or a, sorry, a mortgage audience. Mm -hmm. It's really for agents and loan officers together, industry connected, connecting both sides of the industry. It's relevant to everybody. So for sure, if you're, if you're a lender, that's going to be the more relevant show. Um, So go listen to that one. Just listen to the first bit of one episode, wherever, wherever you listen to podcasts and hear how I just did that, the music to start the show. Like you could just do that and then do it the same every single time. It's a psychological thing. People need the consistency. And, and so you do need some sort of intro. It doesn't have to be the big fancy, uh, you know, voiceover one. Um, it could just be music, but do the same thing every single episode. Consistency is king. And then talking and playing on consistency a little bit, not just for the structure, of the actual podcast episodes, but how often or frequent um, is that something that you recommend being consistent or is it just whenever an idea pops to mind and you publish, like how do you go about that as far as consistency goes? And is that important at all? It's, it's the most important thing and great question. So some of the bigger shows out there, um, I'm thinking of the, the MF CEO project in particular with Andy Frisella. Yeah. He's to the point now, now that he's grown his show and has an audience, okay, he didn't start this way, but now he, he publishes a show whenever. Um, he tries to do two a week, but sometimes they get busy and sometimes he doesn't feel like it, so he doesn't. But in the beginning, until you quote unquote make it, and even, even then, you have to be consistent with that too. If, if you start growing an audience, right? Like if, if it works the way you want and people actually start tuning in and they expect a new show every Thursday and then it's not there, well, that, that sucks. And if they didn't subscribe to your show, if they're just remembering from memory to, to look for your show on Thursday and then it's not there, now they have to go a whole other week and they might forget. So I highly recommend right, right up front, decide how many shows per week, what day is it going to come out and then do it every single time. The consistency is what matters. It, it helps to grow your audience. Uh, Google actually starts to notice that too. Google loves consistent content. And now that podcasts are showing up in the Google search results, <clears throat> then you, the consistency, it's, it's strategy too. It's more than just psychological. It's, uh, it's strategy with, with being discoverable. Yeah, and you know what? The, the whole reason we're recording this right now is because last week, You actually made a post about how Massive Agent Podcast is now starting to show up um, with SEO juice on the first page um, with your podcast right there. And you you mentioned the importance of that just in a caption on the post. But if you could just expand a little bit on that and, and why you think that, well, I don't even know if you have to explain it, but just go ahead and go into how you said it was gonna happen. Now it's finally here. And this is just another reason why everyone listening to this needs to go ahead and start, you know, uh, promoting and producing their own podcast. Yeah. And this is a very big deal. All right. I think we underestimate the power that Google has to make things happen. So just by moving where something is in the search results pages can like, it can cause businesses to thrive or to go out of business. If all of a sudden they were the first result and then they get bumped to page two or to the bottom of page one, they could be out of business, right? So, so it's, it's so important what Google has just done recently. And, and one of their executives um, told us this at a, at a conference I was at over a year ago, they said, Google will soon have audio results in the search results pages. And like that, that burned into my brain. I'm like, okay, 
when they, when they brought YouTube videos onto the search results pages, that changed everything. Like people built gigantic businesses, gigantic brands, made a crap load of money by having great YouTube videos that now show up at the top of the search results. Well, now they're doing that with audio. And guess where those results show up? Above the YouTube videos. It's crazy. So um, when you search Massive Agent Podcast on Google, it shows my website first. Right under that is three different episodes that you can actually click on any device and play the episode right from the search results. That's a big deal. That's a very big deal. And it's just the first iteration. Okay, Google soon, because they, 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 have, they listen to everything. It's not just them reading what you've wrote on your blog. That was terrible grammar, I think. I don't know. I'm a realtor. But they listen to it. They, they transcribe it. Okay, your podcasts are, are also being transcribed into text. And then that's showing up in search results in a different way. When if you're doing a show about the best pizza place in Salt Lake City uh, and maybe the episode is titled something differently, at some point soon, Google is going to say, wait, this, 30, this two minute clip is relevant to what this user just searched for. This user just searched for best pizza, best pizza in Salt Lake. Here's a podcast episode that talks about it. Let's put that two minute clip that's relevant in the search results. Amazing. That's going to be the next step or one of the, one of the next, you know, it's coming from Google. So that right there, if you can establish yourself with a show and start building up a bunch of backlinks and a bunch of, of presence on Google now and start building an audience locally, when that happens, you could absolutely dominate and your listenership could go through the roof. Your brand awareness can go through the roof and you can start dominating local searches where Others with YouTube videos where they spend tens of thousands to edit and all that stuff, they're showing up below you and your little podcast clip. It's just crazy. So right now, those who are listening to this that are kind of on the fence or they just even maybe because they heard this episode for the first time ever even considered having a podcast, number one, there's no shortage in content, especially if you do a local-based show. Um, number two, you're ahead of the trend. It is definitely not too late. It's actually still in the early stages. And, and you would agree with that right there as to why you should jump on this and start creating your own show right now. Oh, we're still so early in this. We're still so early in, in podcasting taking off. Um, I mean, once, once giant multi-billion dollar brands start advertising at scale with podcasts, that's when more and more people are going to start doing them. And, but that's not happening. Like, I hear Squarespace advertising on shows, you know, within our industry, Agentology and Postcard Mania sponsor mine, like, you know, but there's, what about Budweiser? What about Chase Bank? What about, you know, all these like Kellogg's when they start advertising on podcasts instead of TV, just, man, it's going to be a gold rush. And, and that's a ways off. But definitely another avenue for people to create another stream of income when your, your main intention and goal might be to attract your dream client or your dream customer by producing valuable content for that future dream client or customer looking to buy or even sell a home. Um, there could be some, some, some gold at the end of this rainbow in creating a podcast, so to speak, other than just a, a commission. Yeah. When you have a podcast, you become a media company. And media companies can get paid in many, many different ways. It's, look guys, if you're an agent or a loan officer and you're 100% dependent on the commission, that is a dangerous way to live. It's not safe. If something happened and you, and you could not go out and show homes, if you couldn't take listing presentations, maybe you like injured your, yourself and you can't talk anymore, um, you know, you could still write. You could still have someone else do stuff for you, but you can't do the work anymore. If you have other, other means of, of income outside of just the commission, first off, that's fantastic. That's how you build wealth, but it creates a safety net. It, it builds an actual business as opposed to you're just, you know, on the hamster wheel, closing deals one at a time. Hopefully nothing bad happens. I totally agree with you. I couldn't agree more. Dustin, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing these valuable insights in regards to podcasting today. Um, I definitely listen to your podcast and I'm actually going to turn the questions that you ask most of your listeners around on you right now in this rapid fire section. This is the first time I've done this, but I said, why nice. not? 
Um, let's go ahead and give it a shot and just see what happens. Um, so let's just jump right into it. IG stories or Snapchat? Instagram stories. I don't use Snapchat anymore. I don't either. I miss it. That's what got me started. It's what got me comfortable even doing video in the first place. But yeah, at the end too. of the day, you go where your audience is, right? 100%. Facebook or Instagram? Facebook. Okay. Um, YouTube or Facebook Live? Mm, Facebook Live, but YouTube is amazing because it's searchable and it's there forever. So uh, Facebook Live is not that way. You just have to know what you're trying to do, um, but I'm going to pick Facebook Live. Okay, definitely. Um, I've heard things in regards to the differences between these and I've researched it. Facebook Live, I've heard it um, kind of likened to a sitcom or some sort of like current event style of show, whereas YouTube is searchable. It could be uh, found two years from now with certain keywords in your titles and description. Um, whereas you probably wouldn't watch a Jimmy Fallon show from three years ago, but you would definitely tune into that tonight. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, books or podcasts? Podcasts. Absolutely. 100%. Um, I agree with you on that. iPhone or Android? Stupid question. iPhone. <laughs> I was like, damn, I don't really want to ask this one, but yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> We're, we're asking pretty much the same questions. I few a few others in there um, that I just wanted to throw in there, but um, Alexa or Google Home? Alexa. Okay. Yeah. I can't figure Google Home out. Nope. It's, I'd like to get my content on it, but you have to be like some nerdy coder. Just it, It's a ridiculous platform if you want to get your content on it. Alexa is fairly easy. And so, and I don't use Google Home. I prefer Alexa anyways. So Alexa. Do you see it getting easier in the future or do you think they're pretty far off from making that happen for content creators specifically on Google Home? Uh, it won't be Google that makes it easy because Google is just a bunch of nerds. Um, it's going to be some third-party company or service that, that here is what I'm saying or they already know and they're like, yeah, we can figure out a way to just like make it easier to put your content on there. And as soon as that happens, um, I will absolutely jump on Google Home, but I, I don't see them overtaking Alexa. Here's the thing with Google Home though. If, you're, if you get content on there, um, if you start doing a flash briefing, which is a mini podcast for the Alexa platform, Google Home has them as well. I think they're called um, like My News or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, now, see everything we talked about with your content showing up in Google, if you have it on Google Home, then you're that much more likely to have that distributed through Google um, and that's powerful. So as soon as someone makes it easier to get content on Google Home, I'm there, 100%. Absolutely, okay, um, burgers or pizza? Burgers. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, New York or LA? New York, not, not even close. Not even close. And, and you've definitely been to both and experienced them mm -hmm. multiple times. Definitely New York, huh? Oh, yeah. The, New York is New York's the capital of the world, man. There's something so special about New York. I like L.A., kind of, some parts of it. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I just like the hustle and bustle in New York. So I have another one with two cities, and I had to include mine, but I'm sure you've been to both um, Miami or Vegas. Oh. <sighs> I don't like uh, Miami is exhausting, but so, so is Vegas. D dude, I might have to take Miami because Vegas is just desert. I'm sorry, just desert. And Miami at least has a beach and water and some palm trees. And oh, I know Vegas has palm trees. So I'll, go with, I'll go with Miami. Hate to say it. That's cool. Um, so for this iteration or this question, there's going to be three options. It's either baseball, football, or basketball. Football. Okay. Yep. Um, mountains or beach? Mountain. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's funny being on the other side of these ones, right? <laughs> yeah. Ma oh, dude. I don't know. I don't go to the beach that often. I, I like being in the mountains. I like Jackson Hole. I like Park City. I'm going to go with mountains. Okay. Fair enough. Um, are we in a nationwide real estate bubble? No, I, I don't think so. Um, 
if if so, it's just a completely different thing than it was back in 08, 09, because that was that was uh, you know mortgages, bad mortgages were driving that, and when oil shot up through the roof, that kind of all of a sudden people couldn't make ends meet because of that. And one thing led to another. We don't have that right now. We just have so much damn money floating out there that I think certain locations are bubbles. San Francisco for sure. San Jose, like that whole area is very bubbly. But um, nationwide, I don't think we are. I don't think, I wouldn't call it a bubble at all. Are we due for a correction? Yes, but not, it's not a, it's not a crash situation, I don't think. Okay. Um, this is one that I threw in there again for investing stocks or real estate. No, oh, geez. Real estate. hundred <laughs> percent. I've heard there's a debate around this. I still don't get it either, but there are people. Debate. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to hit you with one of your own again here. Grant Cardone or Gary V. Gary V. That's easy for me. I like Grant Cardone's books, but I cannot stand the man. He's too annoying. Can't do it. <laughs> okay. Um, electric or gas vehicles? Electric, dude. I'd love uh, a Tesla is my next car. So absolutely. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, public or private school? Um, dude, that's a good question. <laughs> private, private. Um, my, my son's going to a charter school. He starts kindergarten next week. Uh, so, so that's, you know, kind of a mix between private and public. Um, I don't, dude, I don't know a whole lot about that yet. Cause my son's only five. He's my oldest. Um, uh, but I, I think like the public school system is shit. I, I think the only value there is learning how to interact socially mm -hmm. and you can do that in a private school too. Okay. Um, so I, I'd say private just because they don't have to adhere to the common core BS and all the, you know, nonsense where they don't even teach you how to anything about money in a private school. They can, and they do. Awesome. Um, and last one, and we're going to go ahead and wrap this up it has to do with exercising, running, biking, or swimming. Um, biking. Yeah. More enjoyable. Well, there you go, guys. Dustin Brome from the Massive Ag Agent Podcast, Industry Connected, and you have your flash briefings um, on Alexa as well. I really appreciate you taking the time, like I said, to come in and, and share these valuable insights. Um, for those of you listening, I truly hope that you take some, some nuggets away from this episode. And actually, I hope even a few of you actually go out there and create a podcast. Um, thanks, Dustin, for being on. I truly appreciate it. My pleasure, man. I appreciate it. It's an honor. And what you said at the end there is probably the most important thing of the whole episode. If any of you were inspired or like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to do it. Don't just add it to the list. Do it. There's so many resources out there. There's the resources on my website for like selecting the gear to use, like your microphone and stuff like that. And this thing, if you're watching the video, it's called a pop filter. It just uh, prevents the p -p sounds from, from really messing with the mic. That's all you really need and then get a host and just do it. It's not, I look, I promise. And I know this is why Danny wouldn't say it, but this is why he started his show. He saw me doing mine. He's like, if that chimp can do it, I could definitely do it. And I promise you that's the truest thing you'll hear all, all day. So just do it and you learn how to do it along the way. Absolutely, man. Um, 100%. You were a huge influence on, on me doing it. Um, I listened to, um, as a lot of the listeners know, uh, Russell Brunson a lot, and I took the One Funnel Away Challenge, and they kept on harping on the importance of publishing content and specifically starting a podcast to publish nice. something regularly. So you were definitely one of the influences, and um, I wouldn't quite call you a chimp, but I did think to myself- <laughs> <A> close relative. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if, if Dustin or even myself could do this, anybody can do this. We're not the most technically inclined people. I don't think um, there are plenty of you guys out there who are much more. I think the biggest thing is to get over, um, get over that fear and find that courage of just pressing publish on your phone, finding that house and, and pressing publish. So um, yeah. hopefully you guys drew some confidence from Dustin today and you're actually going to go out there and do it. Thanks again, Dustin. I truly appreciate it. And by the way, you guys go over and check out um, all of his shows. You're going to learn so much from them. Go to the beginning, listen to all of them. Um, thanks again, man. I really appreciate it. You bet, buddy. Thank you. And I'll, I'll see you in Vegas in a couple weeks.
Absolutely. We will definitely be up there. Cool. Um, I'll be over there meeting with you for sure. Okay. Awesome.